Okay, my name is Leah, and my topic is about subacromial bursitis. Um, a little bit of anatomy, there's a picture on the page that I just handed out to you. The subacromial bursa is located deep to the subacromial arch and just superficial to the supraspinatus tendon, so it's sandwiched in between those two structures. So when that area becomes inflamed, then it's going to cause inflammation of the bursa, causing bursitis. Um, the bursa functions to provide lubrication for the tendons that run through there. So when it becomes inflamed, then that's going to um, cause pain because the tendons won't be working, won't be able to slide through there as well. Um, as far as epidemiology, it's common in overhead throwing athletes, but it can also be common in uh, non-athletic patients as well that are you know up in their overhead position a lot. Um, you can have this condition and it be asymptomatic. There was a cadaver study that showed I think 27% of the cadavers in the study had bursitis, but they didn't. It wasn't causing any pain. Actually, that, no, they were real people, because otherwise you wouldn't know. Sorry. Um, they, it can be caused by acute injury, or it can just be due to pathology from overuse injuries like uh, rotator cuff tendonitis or um, subchromial impingement, like we talked about before. Signs and symptoms are going to be anterior lateral shoulder pain, so right where the bursa sits. Um, you're going to have a little bit of restricted range of motion, both active and passive. This will be due to pain. Um, pain with palpation over the summer subacromial bursitis. Patients may admit to rapid increase in activity causing the injury. So if you're taking your history and you know they're a freshman and they're just coming in and they aren't used to the workouts, then that could be a, um, a good sign that you have subacromial impingement. They could possibly have crepitus over the inflamed area when they do go through abduction and adduction. Um, signs and symptoms may be similar to other pathologies, so we're going to need to use other diagnostic tools to help us, which um, generally we can use ultrasound is a good one because then they don't need to have an MRI. I saw that done while I was at Essentia Health. Um, as far as treatment goes, conservative, mostly we're just going to do rest, some ice, and um, some anti-inflammatory medications to start with, and then we're going to do some um, rehab to get them back to their range of motion and strength. You can do corticosteroid injections, which is pretty common in older populations. Um, and in severe cases, like if, they, if the pain is just so severe that they can't even function, then they might be immobilized. And then in that, generally if that occurs, then they're going to have to have surgical um, convention or interventions as well.